All right, let's start, okay? Welcome everybody, my name is Jonathan Wiedemann, Design Director on the Windows Group, and I'm gonna share the presentation with my fabulous colleague, Karen Kessler here. Uh, we are super psyched to share a bunch of exciting developments with you. And today I'll discuss the design journey. We're on together, and we're gonna take a look at some cool new Windows apps, and then we'll dive into some of the details of the Microsoft design language. And then Karen's gonna walk you through making it happen on the Windows Dev Center. You've got a tribe of kindred spirits with you here today. For the first time, Windows has a dedicated team focused on developer experience. Designers, writers, makers, coders, creators like you. We're here because we're committed to you. We're inspired by your talent and passion. We know you have a really, really challenging job, and we're here to help in any way we can. Most of us are wearing a t-shirt like this with a red ninja cat, so if you see one like this, please come up and talk, and, and uh, let's talk design. I hope to accomplish two things in today's talk. The first is give you some actionable tips about the Microsoft design language, just some things we've learned along the way. And secondly, hoping that we can start an ongoing dialogue about design and become something of a design community with some shared design values and some shared design principles. I want all the creators in this room and watching online to feel like we're in this together. Maybe you work with a large design team, maybe you work with an agency, maybe you collaborate with a designer or two, or maybe you are the designer, but you're here because you believe in the power of design, and so do we. So let's start collaborating, let's start creating not only beautiful apps, but successful businesses, and hopefully a design community. So let me take just a minute to talk about where we've been and where we're going, this design journey we're on together. Everybody remember this? That's where our design journey started. Those were simpler days, right? We just had a desktop monitor and a keyboard to design for. We didn't have design tools or values or principles. In fact, design wasn't really relevant back then. It was, it was more of an afterthought. We were polishing pixels and we were making things look pretty. That was design with a small d. And then things started to change. Back in the 1980s, Virginia Howlett convinced Bill Gates to start the first design team at Microsoft. And she led that team from the dark ages of DOS to the new graphical frontier of Windows 3.0. Virginia understood design with a capital D, design that solves human problems, spans hardware and software, integrates visuals and interaction, design that is essential and strategic to building a business. Steve Koneko designed the first ergonomic mouse. It was more usable, felt more human. Steve's here today, so look for him in the design lounge. He was Microsoft's first industrial designer. And today, as the HoloLens design director, he's still pioneering more personal computing. And we entered the new era, natural interface. We moved beyond the mouse and keyboard and started designing for pen and ink, touch, speech, gesture. Bill Buxton encouraged designers to think about system design, end-to-end -end flows, UX architecture. And Bill Flora designed a new way of thinking about visual design. Now, Metro was our internal name for an exciting new visual approach based on Swiss design, based on a lot of the signs and navigation you see in your day-to-day -day life. It led us and the rest of the industry, frankly, towards modern, clean, flat design. Which brings us to today. Albert Shum leads the Windows design team. It's an exciting time. We've got a new culture, new capabilities, a team focused on developer experience, which is super awesome. And we've got a new design language. It's a powerful, comprehensive system now. It comes with the platform. 
It integrates visual interaction design, spans devices and inputs, and it's for everybody, the whole design community. So going forward, this is a journey we're on together. Okay, so that's a little context. Let's move on. We'll take a look at some new Windows apps, and then we're going to see that design language in action. Here's an experience in code that we're shipping just for you. It's a premium app sample. I'm just going to take like a minute to demo this because there's other sessions that actually go pretty deep into this, but I am going to refer to this later in the talk, so I just want you to have a mental image of a few of the things here. Uh, so this is a, uh, a premium app sample that's available to you. I'm showing it as a media app, but this could be many things. So uh, for starters, you've got branding up at the top here you can use. Uh, you can see that it's rich, immersive, end-to-end. You've got vertical scrolling. You've got different types of horizontal scrolling. Uh, let me show you a little bit about the responsiveness. So right now we're in, obviously, like a desktop view. Right there is a breakpoint, what we call a UI breakpoint. I'll talk about that in a minute. It's more of a portrait view, more of a mobile view. Not necessarily device-specific, also just window, window-specific. If I go up to, uh, let me go into a gallery. So this is a gallery. It's got working uh, sorts and filters. There's all code you can use. You go into specific movie. Now we're in a detail view, which is get lots of detail about this specific thing. Uh, you play it. You've got our media transport control. And then uh, let me just close by showing you a couple little settings things here. Uh, you can change the theme, dark to light. Uh, you can also, like, you'll see the uh, hamburger menu up there on the left. Uh, you can switch it to the right, for example, for Surface Hub. We found out that's a better place for navigation. OK, so that's just a thought there on that. I don't have the time to demo them all today, but this is a true universal app. It's running on all of our devices, from the desktop to HoloLens. Uh, if you want more info on this, I recommend uh, Lynette Reed and Rob Cameron's talk on Friday, 2 p.m. They're going to be using this, this sample app and a couple of other sample apps to create a, a, you know, a custom-created app. So that's, that'll be a great practical demonstration of everything we're talking about today. Uh, also, come to the Design Lounge in Moscone on the first floor. Play with the app. Check out the code. Now, I showed a TV and movie experience, but this code design can be used to deliver a lot of great experience. It, it could be a marketplace app that empowers makers and creators. It could be an education app that teaches the joys of a new language. It could be a personal improvement app. Not that any of us need personal improvement, but there's a lot of people out there that do. This would be a great app for them. Or a place to hang out and be more social. All these experiences are totally possible. It just depends on which direction you want to take it. OK, let's take a look at a few more Windows apps. Here's an app for developer productivity. This is live in the store now. It's a new Dev Center dashboard app. You got a summary of all your apps in the store, your revenue, your bugs, your reviews. It's your global business at a quick glance. It supports live tiles and notifications. Check out the way it uses color. It's a vibrant, multicolor approach. We, we actually use the Power BI color palette here. It's great for charts and graphs. And here's a Windows app from USA Today. I think this, this app does a really good job of, of balancing navigation and content uses a lot of the controls and navigation patterns I'll talk about in just a moment. But navigation is not the main point here. This is about reading and consuming and learning. So you see that types guiding the user's eye, icons are reducing clutter, splashes of color. The content is shining here. Responsive layouts scale this fluidly. So we've come a long way from that command line prompt. That's awesome. Maybe the downside is it's a lot more complicated to design today. Multiple input methods, screen sizes, 
trying to meet the needs of people around the world. Now, you've got a comprehensive design language that helps with that. So the Microsoft design language, it's an extensible system, visual interactive experiences that creates an emotional connection to people. It's a bit of a mouthful, so, so let me unpack that. It's extensible, meaning it's actionable for everyone, our entire design community. It's a system. This is integrated into our dev developer platforms and tools. This is very concrete. It goes beyond visuals. This isn't just a visual system. This goes way beyond that in integrating visual design and interaction design. And it delivers a more personal, more human experience and creates positive emotion. So with that in mind, let me just share a couple of specific recommendations about how to use this. These are not laws or rules or anything like that. This is just some, some learning that we've, we've, uh, we've gathered along the way. It's four design principles to think about when you design your app. Keep it simple. Reduce clutter. Strip away anything that is not essential. In the spirit of this one, back in the day of Windows 8, Windows 8 we had, I think, seven design principles. So we're down to four now. That's, that's better. Make it personal. Help your customers make your app into their app. Think universal. Design inclusively for people everywhere. Think about accessibility and localization. A lot of that comes with the platform and the language. And create delight. Find ways to add signature moments into your experience, even if it's just a detail here and there. Now, I know with all the complexity and with everything else going on that sometimes it's easy to forget about these principles. But these are really important. This, you know, it, this, these, are, these unify us as a design community. They get us all pointed in the right direction, and they're great for our users. So, so let's try to deliver principle designs. All our designs use a grid, so we recommend you start there too. Lay out your app with a four pixel grid. This is your app's foundation. For you, the creator, it's blank slate, it's awesome, it's exciting, it's all potential. And for your users, it creates a sense of order and familiarity. This is when you think about your goals, what are the key actions you want your users to take? Is it consumption, commerce, productivity, sharing? Different places in your app, you're going to have different goals. You think all that through at this point. Next, you start creating focus and hierarchy on that grid by adding type and icons. You don't just dump a bunch of content and colors on your blank state yet. You start with grid and type. You use them to reinforce your goals and key actions. You're, you're thinking very structurally here. Our default typeface is Sega UI. We recommend you use it. It's approachable. It's friendly. It's accessible. It's been rigorously tested, so you can use it with absolute confidence. It's readable. It delivers size options optimized for different viewing distances. So for example, we use the 104-point size for reading at 15 feet away, 14-point for 2 feet away, and there's a bunch in between. Thought all that through for you. Sega UI and our scaling system can just handle that. Then layer in icons. Our new icons have a light stroke. They're based on simple geometric shapes. They give your app visual punch. They help direct the user's eye. They help you reduce clutter. Do you, do you really need a word and an icon? Maybe you just need a word. Maybe you just need an icon. Just be thoughtful about that. Both these cases, type and icons, if you want to move beyond our defaults, you can. Just know that you're moving into more advanced territory when you start customizing type and icons, and there's a whole host of like, cultural and accessibility issues to think through at that point. Otherwise, it's easy just to stick with the defaults. You can start to add some more details using different type sizes and weights to guide your user intent, our weather apps, Kind of starting to emerge here. does a good job of this. It's live now. You're still thinking about structure and hierarchy at this point. Other elements of visual design come in later, like color. So let's talk about that. We all know color is important. 
It's deep. It's probably worth its own session or maybe its, its own conference. Big picture, I, I think there's two things I want to say about color. The, the, the first, like the easier way, sort of basic color, is, is don't over rely on color. It, it, you know, it's a technique that you use to supplement your experience. Uh, it's a secondary method of communicating those goals we talked about. And it's back to the idea, idea of letting the grid and, and icons and type do the heavy lifting. If you aren't an expert at color theory and application, just recommend using our color system. The platform does a lot for you. It's got a great, well-tested color palette. It styles your controls. It's TV safe where you want TV safe, like on Xbox. It delivers high contrast and other accessibility features, and it respects the user's color preferences. Okay, so that's number one. That's some color basics. Number two, and this is a bit more advanced and requires more work, maybe you want to express your brand. Maybe you don't want to use the system colors or the user's choices. Maybe you want to add extra personality to your app. That's great. And new features like brushes make it easier to style your app, you need to define your own color scheme, override the system, and use your chosen colors. Again, do this carefully and thoughtfully. There's cultural and aesthetic and accessibility issues to think through. So regardless of the choice you make, basic color or advanced color, know that you'll need to tailor color on certain devices. For example, uh, HoloLens does not recognize black. And Xbox drops the top 16 and bottom 16 of the 256 color palette. So there's, there's some device-specific nuance that you need to be aware of. Joe Stegman gave a great talk about this earlier in the day. So if you missed that and you're interested, check that out online. He goes into a lot more detail about this. With strong visuals in place, now you add detailed interactions and flows. Controls are the most basic building block you use to add interaction to your app. You've got over 45 universal controls to use, and we'll add more all the time. These have a lot built in, color, localization. They scale across mouse, keyboard, touch, pin, gesture, gamepad. And they're all accessible. To, you know, that alone is just a massive time saving. When you aggregate common controls, you create patterns. Last year, you got the controls for free with the platform. This year, you're getting some key patterns for free, too. There's different categories here. There's commanding patterns. There's content patterns. There's up on the screen, there's some nav common navigation patterns, tabs, master detail, active canvas, hub, nav pane. I think you're probably familiar with all these. I do want to look in more detail at the nav pane. So last year, this time, the nav pane implementation in our own apps was inconsistent. And we heard that from you. We saw it ourselves. There was just a lot of issues with overall dimensions and the back button and the hamburger menu and, and, and a lot more. At the time, there was no universal nav pattern, nav pane pattern to share. Even, even amongst our own internal teams. Everybody was learning the new platform and, and kind of experimenting and, and, and trying out different stuff. And actually, that's to be expected. It's, it's all part of the design and engineering cycle. It's OK. Well, it's OK as long as we fix it, and we have. The improved nav pane available now is better type, back button and title bar treatment, flow lines and divider lines margins and gutters, and, and a lot more. And you'll see evidence of this in our own apps as we roll them out. So just one more look at after, before and after. This is the kind of detailed, ongoing improvement that goes into every single control and pattern you get from us. Here's another look at creating larger layouts and flows. If you remember that that cool media app home screen I showed you. Here's how multiple controls and patterns work together to create that. Use the hub control, split view control, dynamic page titles, flip view, and the media transport control. And you assemble these, and all of a sudden you have a rich, immersive experience that invites exploration.
Let's take a look at the details screen. This is where you want to offer a lot of detail on a specific item. This one uses six controls. Ratings, text box, push button, combo box, horizontal list view, vertical list view. Okay, you've got controls, you've got patterns, you've got layouts, now you scale your experience. Windows users expect responsive apps. It's, it's, it's part of our desktop heritage. And with all the devices out there, or maybe if you're coming from another platform, this, this can feel kind of challenging. So I'll touch on three techniques that will help you scale your UI responsibly, scale factor, UI breakpoints, and responsive layouts. Number one, scale factor. We, we talked about this last year. This is where our platform automatically adjusts the size of your controls, fonts, and other UI to help you deliver a consistent viewing experience. It does a lot for you behind the scenes. It's, it's largely invisible for developers, but that said, you do need to think about it when you deliver your visual assets. Number two, UI breakpoints. So you're going to want tailored layouts, and UI breakpoints are the technique to do that. Pick the width of the device you're designing for, or the window size. Lay out your UI. Using adaptive trigger, establish UI breakpoints at the key layout widths of 320, 720, and 1024 effective pixels. When your app window changes and crosses a breakpoint, you can alter layout properties to respond gracefully to the new size you saw that in the, in the media app. And there is some tailoring involved here, and we provide gui guidance around that. This is like a really, really powerful capability of the platform. And so I know there's some work here, but you get a, a, a huge ROI. Number three, responsive layouts. These are layout techniques you use at the UI breakpoints to optimize your layouts. So reposition, reflow, resize, reveal, replace, rearchitect. Uh, one piece of advice here is, is it's start this process by laying out your app for the desktop first, if you can. You can apply all these techniques to the different window sizes you encounter there. Let's check out how all these layout techniques come together. There's one app with two different breakpoints. With more space, the nav pane is visible on the left, and the map is laid out to the right. With less space, nav pane is collapsed underneath the hamburger menu, map reflows underneath. Again, a good way to approach this is to design for the desktop first. The desktop is a superset of all the possible window sizes you'll encounter. OK, you've created a focused app with strong visuals and interactions. Time to bring it all together. Motion is a great way to do that. Here's a brief clip. You can see how this, this feels choreographed. There's a, a storytelling element here. You're, you're leading your user through your app, taking them on a little journey. Motion's pur purposeful, directs the user's eye. It makes smooth transition. It's not gratuitous. There's new platform support for animation effects, things like continuity, parallax, blur, shadows. If you're interested in hearing more about that, there's two really good sessions, Thursday afternoon with James, James Clark and Tim Hewer, and Friday morning session with Dave Driver and Nick Wagner. They'll go into the nuts and bolts of this. OK, so we just looked at 10 actionable tips, five on the visual side, five on the interaction side. Hope that's enough to get you started and thinking about this new design language. Let me wrap up my part with a metaphor that hopefully brings it all together, building blocks. The most basic element, at the most basic level, controls are the fundamental building blocks of your experience. There's a lot of them. They work together. They snap to a universal grid system. And they have powerful capabilities like color and scaling and accessibility built in. You combine these controls 
you get larger patterns, you get modules, page layouts, flows, your app starts to take on structure and depth. We deliver key patterns for you, like search, nav pane, commanding. And pretty soon, you've got something that looks and behaves like a real app. You spent less time with the basics, like building a search box, and more time on the big, de big D design issues, like why does your app exist, and how do you differentiate it, and how does it solve customer problems? Your audience gets familiar, consistent experiences. Next, you apply default visuals. Color, type, icons, motion, all these work together, work together to give your experience a rich, cohesive style, the minimum of effort. And maybe you want to take it a step farther. Maybe you want to express your own brand or use non-default color or typography to differentiate your app. Our design language offers that flexibility and helps you tailor your experience. Go for it. And of course, because it's a universal platform and a true design language, it scales across devices and screen sizes. You can choose how deep or how wide you go with your experience. All right. It's time for the fabulous Karen Kessler. Uh, she and I and our teams have been working really closely together on this, and I'm very happy to pass the baton to her so she can explain how to make all this happen in the Windows Dev Center. Awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, I'm Karen Kessler, and I lead the content team for Windows. And that includes the team of people that create and manage all of the content that you see on the Windows Dev Center. Now that we've showed you some about our design language and direction, I'd like to show you some of what we've done for you to help you create beautiful UI in your own apps. We've learned a lot from you in the last year, and we've been adjusting and adapting the information and the experiences that you see on the Dev Center. One of our most valuable assets is your feedback. And we thank you for that. Whether it's in the Dev Center, through the Insider Program, through surveys or events such as this one, please keep talking with, to us through any of those venues. We really appreciate it and the time that you take to share your thoughts and insights. Now here's some quotes that we've gotten from the Dev Center itself. You told us that you want to hear more about design direction and you said you want information about designing apps yourself. That's why we're here. You also told us that it was hard to find stuff. That makes us sad. And one thing is super clear. You want more code. And the thing is, we have quite a bit, but you can't find it. So we hear you, and we've listened, and we've made some changes. So let me take a few minutes to show you some of what we've done in the Dev Center. I'm going to switch over and jump right in. Here we go. Now you all know MSDN, but think of the Windows Dev Center as the center of gravity for everything for Windows app development, whether you have a little or a lot of experience. Yes, you'll find code. But the Dev Center has so much more, because you're not just creating apps, you're building a business. But this is the place to go for everything about UWP apps, games, IoT, holographic, Cortana, and even more. And now we've done some things to make it easier for you to get going with your first UWP app. So let me show you. I'm going to jump right in here in the Dev Center under Docs. You'll see me go on here frequently in the next few minutes, so it's a thing to remember. Docs and in Windows apps. And there's Get Started. Now you have a collection here of the basics you need for your first UWP app. It helps you set things up, shows you how to create a developer account, and gives you tutorials and code samples to help you get going. Now let's start talking about some code now. Back up to Docs. And now this time, let's jump into Develop. 
Now here you'll find information for your core development tasks. You'll find some code and lots of information about code. Things like using geolocation features, performing app-to-app -app communication, debugging, and creating threads. You'll also find code snippets and links to related samples. Now once you've created your app, you definitely want to get it in the store. So let's jump over to the Publish section to see how. Docs, Windows Apps, and now I'll jump down to Publish. Here's where you'll find what you need to publish your app to the store. You'll see information on how to submit your app, and then monitor and update it over time as you listen to your customers just like we're listening to you. We've also added more to your dashboard. That's where you'll go to manage your app once you have it in the store. Now I'm not going to spend time on that today because we have a dedicated session on the dashboard and the store. And I believe it's at 5 o'clock today, so not shortly after this one, so be sure and check it out. Now this session is about design, so let's take a close look at the design and UI section. Docs, Windows apps, and now design and UI. Now Jonathan talked earlier about patterns and controls. And here's where you'll find the specifics about that and how to apply it to your own work. You'll see the essentials for creating beautiful UI, how to structure your app, how to lay out pages, how to style your app with color, typography, and motion. You'll also find out how to broaden the market for your app by making it accessible and localizable. Those two features can open up entire new opportunities for you and your work. Now let's jump into controls and patterns. I'll scroll down here and just click on controls and patterns. Just a moment, there we go. Now here we have information for people who are new to the platform, followed by a list of controls for those who know what they're looking for. So let's take a look at the guide for media playback. Jump right in there. Now I'll pause here for a moment to show how we've brought stuff together. We used to have design information in one place and control information in another place. But we know that the dev and design process go hand in hand. So these articles now mimic that collaborative process. Each of them begins with some basic information, the kind that's useful to developers and designers. And we hope that this layout helps you quickly see if this is the control that you want to use. You'll see what it does, when you should use it, and links to similar controls that you might want to use. But wait, there's more. Back to your number one request for more code. Once we've explained how to use the control, here's the new part. We show you how to code it. Again, everything is in one place now, and we can celebrate having all of this information together. Now let's look at some new tools in code. I'm eager to show you this stuff. Now I'm going to go back up here to the Design and UI section. Under Docs, Windows Apps, Design and UI. Now we've put together, now let's see, here we go down to Resources and Downloads. Now we've put together a set of templates and tools to help you design your UWP app. We have design templates for PowerPoint, and Adobe Illustrator, and a Redliner tool. These templates use screens for different devices and a complete set of universal controls. You asked for Adobe Photoshop templates, so we made some. These templates make it easy for designers and developers to collaborate on UI. Rob and Lynette, two people you heard of earlier, they're super busy at this conference, they have a session showing you how to use these templates, so be sure and find that so you can check it out and see them in action. We also recently created a cool new tool called the Tile and Icon Generator. This tool takes something like your existing app logo and generates the recommended assets for your tiles, icons, and more. 
saves you a ton of time. Mike Jacobs will be demoing this one in the mini theater, so be sure and check it out. Again, you can stop by the design lounge as well, and we can show you more about these things. Now let me show you the PowerPoint templates in action. These are super cool and a great way to do some quick, quick prototyping so you can get the ideas out and in a place where you can share them with others. Now I've downloaded these from the Dev Center and I've just saved them in a folder here. You would see it the same way and you'll see that there's three templates here. One for PCs, phones, and tablets. Now I'll just open up the one for PCs. Let me show you a few things. Now the cool thing here, super helpful, the instructions for these templates are included in the templates themselves to make it easy for you. Now these templates leverage PowerPoint's storyboard feature. So I'm just going to click on storyboard shapes. And voila, you see our controls are all right there. Now they're down here. Trust me. Now I've saved some of those up into the My Shapes section to make it easy to show you this. So now I'm going to choose over here a blank template for the PC. And now I can just simply start dragging controls over here and start playing around with UI. So first I'll drag over a window frame. Bring that guy over, bing. And I'll add a grid right there. And a command bar. Let's bring that up at the top, bam. And a couple buttons. One, two. There you go. Again, get your ideas out, start collaborating them with others. Now I'm a writer by trade and I lead a content team, but look, now I'm a designer too. And we're hiring, aren't we Albert? Albert's right over there. If you're interested, catch him afterwards and let us know. We'd love to have you join the team. Now again, you get the idea. I can save this, send it to you. You can move things around, add things, take some of what I put on there off, save it, send it back, invite others, and off we go. We're collaborating on UI. Super cool, powerful tool for quick prototyping. Now let's check out some samples. I'm going to go back to the Dev Center, and I'll jump back up here to the top to samples. Now we know that different situations require different types of code. So you'll see a variety of samples to choose from. At one end of the spectrum, we have showcase samples. These are deluxe, complete apps that demonstrate the best practices for designing and developing apps. These are great when you want to see how all the pieces come together. At another end of the spectrum, we have doc snippets, which appear directly in our articles. No clicking required. These are great when you want a focused example on a specific API. Now let's check out a couple showcase samples. First up, Hue Lights. I have this open already in a separate tab to show you. And I'll call your attention to this being in GitHub. Both of these samples are in GitHub along with many of our other things. And it represents our momentum for moving information and code to open source. Now this sample shows you how to run your home lighting system from a Windows device. It demonstrates how to interact with REST APIs, how to extend Cortana, and how to use Bluetooth low energy APIs with the Philips Hue lighting system, which is essentially a Wi-Fi enabled system. Now one more, photo sharing app. Again, I have that open in a tab. Now this is one of our favorite showcase samples. It's an app that shows you how to share photos via real world social media. With this app, users can earn virtual gold by uploading and sharing photos with people around the world. This app demonstrates responsive UI, in-app purchases, Azure app service, push notifications, and more. You can download both of these from the Dev Center. Phew, that's a lot of cool stuff. You want to code? Boom. Yeah. Now many of you have told us that our videos are also helpful. 
So I'd like to conclude today by showing you one that we've put together for those who are new to UWP app design and development. Let me switch over. And start that up for you. The Universal Windows platform provides the building blocks you need to create elegant and adaptive Windows apps that look great on a wide variety of devices. First, UWP automatically adjusts the size of the controls, fonts, and other UI elements so that they are legible on all devices. UWP uses a new effective pixel system to achieve this. UI elements are automatically optimized for perceived size so that a 15 pixel font on a Surface Hub 10 feet away is just as legible as a 15 pixel font on a smartphone in your hand. With this, you can ignore details like pixel density and screen resolution and focus on how you want the app to look. Second, UWP's universal input system automatically understands a variety of input from different devices. You don't have to worry about how your UI responds to the tap of a finger, a mouse click, or an air tap on a HoloLens. It just works. Third, UWP apps come with a set of universal controls and styles. Universal controls work well on any type of Windows device. They adapt to the different screen sizes and different input modes on each device. Our built-in universal styles come in two themes, light and dark. These styles use a Sago-based font that looks crisp at all sizes, supports high contrast modes, and supports adapting your app to other languages. You can ship your app with these styles and it will look great. Or you can use these styles as a starting point and add your own personality to the look and feel. You might want to optimize the use of screen space, take advantage of specific sensors, or tailor the experience for a specific type of input. If this is the case, there are some techniques to help you design your app for a specific screen size. We call these techniques the six R's. Depending on whether a screen is portrait or landscape, you may want to reposition some content. It may be easier to scroll content vertically on one device and horizontally on another. If you have a larger screen, you may want to resize some elements and adjust margins and spacing. This may improve readability and comfort. There may also be times you want to reflow content by adding another column if the screen size allows it. Also dependent on the size of the screen is whether you reveal or hide some elements. In tighter spaces, you might want to hide controls until needed, whereas on a larger screen, they could always be visible. In some cases, you may want to replace or re-architect some UI. You may want to change how you dive deeper into data and take advantage of the layout of the screen. The Universal Windows platform takes you a long way in creating apps that run great on all Windows-powered devices. Okay, yeah, thank you. So in closing, let me just bring this back around full circle. We talked about the design journey we're on together. What about tomorrow? We are right on the cusp of a new design era, which is super cool and exciting. This doesn't happen very often, right? From DOS to GUI, from GUI to NUI. And now we are right on the cusp of a new era. And that'll be new tools, new immersive devices, new interactions based on gesture and biometrics, new inclusive design techniques that touch everyone. As designers, we're going to evolve and flex into this new era. And the combination of the Microsoft design language and then the universal Windows platform will be incredible tools for us to do that. And the design leader for this era? Well, we're not sure yet. Hopefully, it's not somebody from Microsoft. Hopefully, it's one of you. We're committed to giving external developers and designers all the tools and assets, capabilities that we have. There's no special, no special sauce for us. So next year when we come to build, hope to see one of you up there. I think that's it. 
As we mentioned, we so appreciate your feedback, and we just thank you for every opportunity that you take to share that with us. And we have some of that certainly for this event. There's some flash voting outside. We really would appreciate a few minutes of your time again, as well as the Insider Program and the other channels that are open year round. So again, we just thank you for that, and please keep it coming. Thank you. In closing, we'll, we'll just leave this up here in case you want to check it out. Uh, you're here because you believe in design. There's a bunch of other great sessions, on-site support. Uh, check us out in the design lounge and the, ask the experts areas. We've got app consults up on the flood, third floor of Moscone where you can sit down with a designer and talk about your app. Three more three theater sessions and a total of uh, four live sessions there. So you may just want to take a cell phone shot of that and use it as your, uh, your design track. Also, we've got a Twitter handle up there at Microsoft Design, so please uh, you know, follow that and, and, and let's get that dialogue going that we talked about. And all the samples and the video that we showed you are up on the Dev Center today, so check them out. Thank you. This